Hello Internet! Here a very short code video on how to do sentence embedding on BERT transformers and sentence transformer models in October of 2021, which model to choose from, and my shortcuts. So let's start. We are here in a Jupyter lab. And as you can see, we import our numpies, we import our pandas, we import a dimensionality reduction algorithms called UMAP. We, alg we have a cluster algorithms we import, some pretty pink, and we have some NLTK, some MATLAB, some transformers. And then, of course, we have our sentences. As you can see, I have here a simple text file. And this is a report from Deloitte on the tech trends on 2021. As you will see, this is a very general text about some technological foresight. So you have to be very careful to choose a model that it has some domain specific training already applied on if you want to apply it on your sentences. I will show you in detail what I mean. So my sentences, I have 1,781 sentences. And as you can see here, this is some general introduction about some growing number of organizations across sector accelerating digital transformation efforts and some dynamic fluctuation and demand customer expectation, whatever you would expect from a paper from Deloitte. So as you already know, we have at first to check the maximum length of sentences because as you are familiar, BERT has a word piece limitation and we just want to have here an idea. And if you see here, apply the histograms of the number of words per sentence. And you can see here, average, we have a peak here at about 11 words per sentence and there's a maximum of about 36 words per sentence. So let's start with compute our sentence embedding. Now, the simplest way I can highly recommend is to choose a particular sentence transformer model from Hugging Face that has already, already been pre-trained. Now, if we say here we are not going for a word embedding model, but for a sentence embedding model, you know that SBIRT is the place to look for. And if we look here at sbird.net, you can see here that we have some pre-trained model and a model overview. And there is, and today is, as I told you, October 2021. Now here, the model that have been trained lately and their performance on sentence embedding and semantic search. You have an average performance, the speed and the model size and whatsoever. You can have a look at all the different models and they tell us, okay, if you go for an all MPNet based version two, that looks good as a sentence embedding model, or you go for a distilled Roberto or some LML 12 and all the paraphrase model you are familiar with. So let's switch here to hugging face. We have here now our hugging face uh, model page. Uh, we are looking for a PyTorch implementation. The sentences are in the language English. And as you can see, we only got 3,940 BERT uh, transformer models. And now we are here on the task on sentence similarity. And we have some sentence transformer models, as you can see here, 22. And they would recommend updated August 30. Mini LML6, L12, if you want to have a little bit better performance. And there's again our all MPNet based version 2 that is also recommended, you remember, by Aspert.net. Here we go. And this is it maps sentences and paragraph to a 768 dimensional dense vector space where we can do some dimensionality reduction. Then we apply the cluster algorithms. And we have uh, that the model can be used for tasks like clustering or semantic search. This is exactly what I'm looking for, clustering or semantic search. So if you want to find out about the background and the intended use, you see here your input text should no, no longer than 384 word pieces because then it is truncated. 
So this is great. The model has been trained on Google's TPU and the 100,000 star batch size of 1000 and we had 128 per TPU core and blah, 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 the training data. You can see the name of training tuples is here, 726 million from Reddit. Uh, that's interesting because you have to be familiar with the text the model has been trained on. And you see here 700 million training tuples are coming from Reddit comments. So maybe you should be aware that sometimes Reddit comments are not absolutely neutral. So watch out which model you choose. But okay, all MPNet based version two. So we jump back to our code. Uh, either we choose this model or if you want, you can go for Alberta, but let's say, okay, let's choose this model. Let's download this pre-trained model to our local machine. I'm working here on a Windows 10 laptop. And as you can see, it's already downloaded and in 10 seconds it is done. Of course, then we have to tune the model to our sentences. This is uh, my, my sentence array. Batch size is 128. And here we go. Now, it takes a little bit of time to encode it. And then we can have a look at the shape of the encodings. And we hope to see that all our 1,700 sentences are encoded in, if I remember correctly, in a 768 dimensional dense vector space. So this is gonna take time. It's about one and a half minutes and I see you in a second. And I am back here. You see it take, took one minute and 11 seconds to calculate it. So we have now with our pre-trained model, we just squished in our sentences and we received an embedding for each and every of our 1781 sentences. And we have now a 768 dimensional representation of this embedding. Yeah, you can have, of course, normalized. So what we have now is a result sentence embedding calculated based on general pre-trained model. Now, if you have a very specific domain specific knowledge, I don't know, you are, you are uh, having some text that is highly scientific, uh, you are mathematical text, the theoretical physics text, the medical text, or I don't know, maybe archaeology, you uh, may be interested in some additional unsupervised learning. So one recommendation here, and this is also by Espert, as you can see, relied heavily on labeled data to train sentence embeddings models. But if the labeled data are not available, you can overcome this limitation with some unsupervised approach. And one idea here is, and you see here the publication, is to use the transformer-based denoising autoencoder. So this means more or less that you simulate that 60% of your text is heavily noised, and then you try to relearn the system based because you have the real text and you have the noisy text, and you let the system train on the sentences. An unsupervised learning. Now we can apply this, so what we have we have here a, a transformer model. We use the simplest model, BERT base, uncased. We have some word embedding model. This is our transformer. We download a, a pooling layer where we have our word embedding and we have some CLS tokening going on. And then we just put it in a sentence transformer and we get our model, our sentence transformer model. Then we have, of course, our sentences and a very, very specific loss function. Because what we need here is a denoising autoencoder loss model. You can have a look at this in SBIRT, where you can see here, where is it, where is it, where is it? Losses. And if you go here, if you train a neural network, of course, the loss function you choose is highly important. So please have a look at all these different loss functions that are already pre-programmed for you. Choose whatever is right for you. You get some very interesting documentation here going on. Cosine similarity we're going to use for some uh, information retrieval later on. 
And as you can see here, we have our denoising autoencoder loss implementation, blah, blah, blah. As you can see here, there are some different decoder path, decoding and encoding. And if you tie the encoder and the decoder whatsoever, please check out the code. I'm just gonna show you if you apply this now to our model, we get now a new model. Maybe I should not to get into troubles because I call this model Let's say do, 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 do. the model here we call, let's call the model that we model S because this is our sentence embedding model. And if you want to have a look what the model is included in, do, 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 do you will see that you have a word embedding model at a word transformer model oops then you have a pooling layer and this pooling layer has no normalization so here are model s we have a transformer model sequence length is 512 with a transformer model this is our standard word model and the pooling you have here word embedding dimension 768 this is our model we've chosen we have the pooling mode is CLS token is true. We have not activated the mean or the max mode. And also there is a mean mode with the square root of the length of the token, which is very interesting in, in itself. But this time we just go with CLS token and we say, okay, uh, there's a simple way if you want to train it or if you want to have a more advanced training algorithm where you say, okay, I have some warm-up steps. My schedule has an integration of a warm-up linear, but we just go for the very simple task. And you see here, if we go for one epoch, that it should take about, let's have the first run, 10 minutes, 15 minutes here. On my computer, I have an AMD CPU and unfortunately no GPU with CUDA cores. So I'm locally limited here on some CPU calculation. Therefore, it's gonna take about 10 to 15 minutes. I suppose I will be back with you in a second. And after 12 minutes, you can see that my little CPU with six cores and 12 threads uh, took about 12 minutes to calculate one epoch. Now, of course, if you choose to run this program on Google Colab, and I remember I had 100 epochs on a K80 GPU, it took me about one hour. Or, of course, if you want to invest some money and you choose a tensor processing unit, a TPU of Google, this will be achieved quite faster. So, now I want to show you that the embeddings that you receive, you can have a dimensionality reduction and a clustering of this embedding plus a visualization in 3D. Therefore, I have to go back because with one epoch, the result of course will not, uh, will not converge. I choose my predefined or pre-trained model, my sentence transformer model from Hugging Face. I load my all impnet base version two. I compute my code. This is done in one minute as you are familiar with it. And I end up with the embeddings that I'm looking for. So this is going to take two minutes, Bene, two minutes. Uh, what I will show you is if you come up with your embeddings, then you will have some dimensionality reduction. As you remember, we are now currently in a 768 dimensional vector space, which has some very interesting uh, metric structure. And we can apply UMAP, a very intelligent algorithm, to reduce the dimensionality. And as you see here, I have my code here to reduce from 768 dimensional vector space, a representation in a 12 dimensional vector space. And I have to define the size of my local neighborhood. 
used for a manifold approximation. Now you can here play around with your values, with your learning rate, with your metric you want to impose, the spread, the local connectivity, the target metric you're interested in. I go for Euclidean, as you can see. And you will get in the end some UMAP embeddings in a 12 dimensional vector space. And this is very nice. Uh, already running the fuzzy simplicial set because then, no, I'm not going to use dense map today. We can have uh, cluster algorithms apply in this 12 dimensional space, which preserved the local connectivity in this space. So you have two parameters to choose from. You're familiar. We have a minimum sample size and you have a minimum cluster size. Of course, minimum cluster size is self-explanatory and the sample size, the larger the values of your minimum samples is, the more conservative is the cluster. This, uh, this means that you have some points that belong to a cluster and some data points that will be regarded as noise, background noise, and will not be included in a cluster, which is very nice. And this is what we are looking for. And if I run this representation now with our 1781 sentences, you see I get 10 clusters. Cluster number minus one here is my noise cluster. Minus one stands for noise and 387 sentences. The system could not assign to the other nine clusters. You have now very fast, uh, three, you have to calculate now a three-dimensional representation because we have to see it in 3D. So you run again through this, then you do a little bit background diagrams. Yes, you can do it on a word level. I like to do it on a diagram and trigram level because I want to see which are the most important diagrams and trigrams. And then you can just apply a plotly, a network X presentation. And you see here is your uh, document of Deloitte, the Tech Trends 2021. And let's do this, put it a little bit more. And you have here your clusters. And the nice thing, you just can, the clusters here in the, in the, the light gray, you can just deactivate the cluster and then you have your specific topic, specific cluster of the document. So you can say the document contains of this specific clusters and the cluster here, the legend of the cluster here is either a bigram or a trigram if the trigram is significant in my data set. And you can see here the first cluster in, let's call it orange, zero trust, trust architecture, zero trust architecture, zero trust approach, security, security mindset. Of course, you can identify the cluster. You can have the next cluster, physical, digital, human experience, remote work, diversity, supply chain, machine learning, data management, strategy development, your business case, your cloud-based, your low-code, your edge computing, your ERP systems whatsoever. You can play around with this. You can have a look at this in different dimensions. You can identify each and every point of the cluster that you are interested in. And this is a cluster algorithm applied to a sentence embedding of close to 2000 sentences of a document on the Tech Trends 2021. And without reading the document, and imagine you have hundreds and thousands of documents and you want to get an idea about the clustering that's going on. This is a very nice way to apply sentence embedding in a high dimensional space, reduce the dimension, apply an intelligent cluster algorithm, and you will get here different thematic topological clusters that you can then go and investigate further. I hope you enjoyed this little video. This was it for today. Thank you for watching.